In the early 1970s, the transistor made it possible to make an affordable battery-powered ionization smoke alarm for home use. In 1972, the photoelectric type smoke alarm was invented and patented, though it was more expensive than the ionization type. In 1976, NFPA 101, Life Safety Code, that's a nationally used code in the United States, required smoke alarms to be installed in newly constructed homes. Starting in 1977, smoke alarms were installed in United States homes at a rapid rate. It's estimated that 96% have at least one and that 94% of those are the ionization type. The photoelectric type were more expensive and the battery operated ones disappeared from the market. This is part of Table 24 from a 2008 Smoke Alarm Performance Study by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Look closely at how long it took for an alarm condition in a smoldering fire. It took about 55 minutes longer for the ionization type to go into alarm. After some fatal fires, with working ionization smoke alarms in this study, it is now recommended that you use dual sensor alarms or at minimum a photoelectric type. Dual sensor types have both ionization and photoelectric technology. If either kind detects smoke, the smoke alarm will sound. They have the I and the P symbol on the back and or the front of the smoke alarm. Photoelectrics will have only a P symbol on the front or the back. Modern ionizations will have just the I symbol and older ones will indicate that they have radioactive material someplace, perhaps on this can on the inside or maybe a label on the back side. Before purchasing any new smoke alarms, it may be a good idea to contact your local codes official to find out if any new codes apply to your home. I have additional videos that explain how to properly place smoke alarms. Click on the channel name Know How Now to find them. A thumbs up is always appreciated. And thanks for watching.